Good morning guys. It's Saturday morning and today it's all about hydrangeas. Breezy uh, Saturday morning in central North Carolina. This is Louie and welcome to Acorn Hill. As you can see I am talking to you in front of our hydrangea bush um, along the front of our house. Uh, there are 14 of them along this garden bed. Now in the middle of this patch there's a, an ilex of some sort um, right there. I, I think that's a Korean boxwood which I haven't really trimmed yet. It's early um, summer in our area and look at the growth on that thing. Anyway, I'm here today to talk to you about hydrangea, how I, how I grow them and this specific kind which is a macrophylla um, a mop head. There's a lot that people do in growing their hydrangea. I can only share with you what's successful for us, how this has really thrived um, and really given us a lot over the years. Uh, and the story about these old hydrangeas that I have, these are probably uh, 15 years old now, uh, the bushes themselves. Um, 10 years uh, already planted here in the scorching heat of North Carolina. So I'll talk to you all about them and hopefully uh, we'll learn something new together. If you are new to the channel, subscribe. Uh, we appreciate you considering to do so. As I said early in the video, these are the original hydrangea macrophylla bushes that I planted in our garden when we used to live in the Northeast. Almost all of these bushes I got as an after season sale, um, usually at 75% off. They grew in our garden for about three years before we relocated to North Carolina. And as you can see, they're pretty established with good rootstock and a lot of good foliar growth and they've given us a lot of blooms. When we relocated, every single bush was uprooted, put in big black garbage bags. And as you can see from the U-Haul truck, it was filled to the brim with the hydrangea bushes along with our other choice perennials. It took 15 hours to drive from the Northeast to North Carolina and after 500 miles, the hydrangea bushes along with our rhododendron and several perennials survived the trip later after they were planted in North Carolina native soil. The hydrangea survived, they're alive, and they were thriving with blue, big mop head blooms. Fast forward to 2020, and the hydrangea have survived. They have actually liked the North Carolina native soil and uh, have been producing uh, quite a lot of blooms lately. It is the beginning of summer, early June, most of the blooms start coming up around third week of May and they start to mature and gain color. Though this year I've noticed that some of them have slightly faded. Um, it is a matter of just getting the fertilizer and the soil acidifier even and well distributed throughout this big garden bed. Um, this probably measures around 20 feet uh, by 5 feet. Um, seven bushes on the front this is the front of the house so we have about seven or eight bushes planted side by side the korean boxwood uh, in the middle and as i swing around uh, to show you what else i have as i swing the camera along uh, this corner of the bed and along the side of it you'll see that there's the korean boxwood or the ilex and along the back this is now facing the front of the house. There's also a row of seven or eight uh, individual perennials uh, with the blooms on them. And the macrophylla really can put on a show um, if the fertilizing and the schedule of it is well applied. For any plant to survive, a good soil is a must for it to grow in. I'll have a separate video talking about the health of any growing medium, particularly any garden soil. But right now, I wanted to focus on how I fertilize, how I schedule, and how I apply in the products that I use when I fertilize my hydrangea. There are four instances for me 
to be reminded on. And I have it on my iPhone as a reminder on when to fertilize my hydrangea. First is during early springtime. The second time would be when they start breaking dormancy, which means I see small leaf buds present on the branches. The third time is when the flowers start emerging. And the last time would be during the early fall. Now let me tell you what I do each and every time I get reminded by my iPhone on what to do and the specific products I use. In early spring, I typically use Espoma soil acidifier. It's a granular so slow release fertilizer that I apply in March. Then I do a miracle Grow, and it's a water soluble food for acid loving plants, which again I apply in March and I apply that weekly. The purpose of that is to start having the soil something to break down so that I could get some acid that will turn my hydrangea blue. It's important to note though that for my personal preference, we like growing our hydrangea macrophylla uh, color blue. And that's why we use uh, amendments that help and promote uh, the petals of the blooms to turn blue in this situation. The second time I start applying amendments and fertilizer and the hydrangea is when I start seeing leaves showing off the branches of uh, the plant. This means that they're waking up from dormancy, they're waking up from winter time, and they need the basic nutrients in order to help them push more growth and push more leaves and turn a green color as the leaves start showing more. And in this case, I just use an all-purpose fertilizer, again, either granular or soluble, that I apply weekly to feed the plant. Now, what happens then when the flower buds start merging? Well, that's a whole new different story because now we're gaining some of those flowers that we've been, we've been waiting all season long. And in this case, I need to use high phosphate plant food, like a miracle Grow Bloom Booster, which I apply weekly. I also combine, uh, along with the phosphate plant food, a miracle Grow plant food for acid-loving plants, which I apply weekly as well. Sometimes I mix them together in half strength. That way the plant gets the, the benefit of both. Um, phosphate really helps them start pushing more blooms and gaining more color and that blue that I need for the petals of the hydrangea. And the last time I apply fertilizer to the plants is in the early fall, where now I stop everything. I stop the high phosphate, I stop the miracle food for acid-loving plants, but then I apply plant tone at half strength. I want to point out here that during the early fall, the plants are starting to, it's used up all its energy during the growing season, and they're starting to yawn Basically, they want to go back to sleep in the winter. And so I don't want to give them full burst of energy for them to continue growing and get confused by the natural timeline that they have during the calendar year by giving them too much food. We now need to slowly bring down the amount of food that they need to get. And an Espoma plant tone at half strength really does the job. That'll just tuck them in really nicely into the winter with some energy to use so that by the time spring rolls in, the cycle starts back over again. Okay guys, clearly it's a different day uh, when I took this video. I decided to add this video along with uh, the first part to show you what I do when we have this kind of situation. There was a summer thunderstorm that barreled through our area and it carried high winds along with it. So right now, at this video, you can see that the leaves, the branches, even the flowers uh, have flopped over. And when this happens, uh, when plants are drenched in moisture and water, uh, the mop heads become heavy when the canes and branches are long and leggy then they will bend over what I do here is uh, approach this in a naturalistic way and try not to uh, gird them too tightly where the branches look restricted and too restrained um, a few weeks ago I've cut down 
our crepe myrtle and I was left with uh, long branches that I've set aside and these are what I use for plants that tend to droop down. Uh, I put them and stake them in the ground and assist the branches. Look at this. Right in the middle of it, it exposes the crown and you can see the branches stemming from the crown of the plant. We don't want them to break off. Um, in this shot, you guys can see me trying to figure out strategically how we can put those branches, stick them in the ground, and slowly uh, we wanted to support every branch in segments. I had to be extra careful here um, because I can feel the weight of the branches with the mop heads on them that are now mature and really showing their color. Uh, really carefully sticking the branches into the ground so that we don't uh, harm and damage the branches. This was not too challenging, uh, albeit um, right now I look like I'm struggling uh, putting them in the, in the soil. And here's how it looked after I've uh, put about three or four branches uh, on the side of that garden bed. Currently, I was putting in this uh, part of the video, I was putting in more branches uh, along the front side of the garden bed. Being very extra careful moving those blooms out of the way and the large leaves of the hydrangea so that they don't um, get torn apart by the branches. So far, this has been a really good growing season for the hydrangeas. The leaves uh, have very shiny uh, texture on them. And one can see how healthy they are. Uh, but the twigs really do uh, a good job in staking them up and preventing them from falling over. Um, part of it uh, kind of looks a little restricted, but over time, in, in a week or two, the branches will slowly assume a natural cascading order. This patch of hydrangea is a fixture in our cul-de-sac. Our neighbors look forward to seeing it every year. I hope you enjoy watching my videos as much as I enjoy making them for you. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, why don't you click on that subscribe button along with the little bell icon if you don't mind pressing on that so you could be notified each time I release a new video. This is Louie and we'll see you back here in Acorn Hill.